Yeah, quite a different site today, uh, big tree felling. We've got a couple of diggers, three diggers in fact on site with grapples and big macrocarpers coming down. We've got 10 students on site, uh, two professional loggers and two tutors. Students are doing a great job. Big macrocarpers or Monterey cypresses, whatever you want to call them. Got a cable set up in this tree, it's ready to pull. Scarf is done, and I'll just check what else is going on. Stand back, guys. Bit rotten in there. The one I told him would be. Oh well, it makes it easier to get the cable out. <laughs> well done, Tucker. Thank you. Uh, I just need someone to unhook the cable. Welcome to the channel, I'm Andrew Harrison and I'll just document a little bit of what's going on as we go through the rest of this video. Explaining what's going on step by step really, that first tree was a side leaner, obviously a lot of decay in it, uh, went a little bit sideways when we pulled it but uh, that was not unexpected. This tree that we're looking at now is a big double leader as you can see. We couldn't fell the whole tree from base level because there was a risk that the union was not intact and then as the tree would go over uh, either side both stems would go in different directions so we've chosen to scarf each stem in opposite directions in the way that they're leaning we actually don't have a machine on this uh, for pushing or pulling and then we are cutting after the scarves were cut, cutting down between the two stems, then to complete the cuts, the plan was to do bore cuts from either side, because they're uh, pretty big trees, as you can see. Uh, we've had to build up the base of the ground with these pallets that we just found lying around. Uh, that just makes it safer height to be working with the chainsaw. I've trimmed this down a little bit, it, uh, it's not really worth watching in real time because it's, uh, it's quite a lot of cutting and even though the dust from the saw looks pretty fine and it implies that the saw might be d uh, blunt, it's, uh, the saws are in good condition, they've been well sharpened, they were sharpened uh, every day and if they needed it uh, a couple of times a day we had plenty of saws so there was um, no need to use dulled chains. The reason that it's such fine dust is because we're not cutting across the grain, we're cutting uh, effectively ripping and also it's very compressed timber in this area. So Craig's almost got the cut all the way down to the required height here. You'll see in a moment he's going to switch angles and cut from the other side. Some of you might be wondering if we usually let the students loose on such large trees and not normally this is probably one of the bigger projects that we've taken on however we had the opportunity and it would have been well it was really good experience for the students uh, they really appreciated it even though they really on this site I think did one tree each which uh, obviously if we've got a uh, Smaller trees, they can be doing more than that, but we did have other sites where we were felling, or the students were felling, you know, five to ten trees each day. So they're pretty experienced with their tree felling, and uh, this was just a good opportunity to challenge them a bit more. Now you can see this cut 
at the top is starting to open up. Don't do this every day. Just do it every day. Just another day at the office, eh? Another day. So I don't know if you heard what Ed said there, but he was just saying, you know, another day at the office, really. Um, they uh, they took it in their stride. And the digger there, or uh, excavator, whatever you want to call it, is, is actually well clear. There's, um, there's no chance of the digger being in the drop zone. Uh, discussion here as to whether the tree is going to go or not. The, uh, the consensus is that um, they're going to have to cut the, the lower level cut and then potentially finish it off from the other side which uh, you'll see how it unfolds. As you know if you've done much felling you really need to stay calm, keep composed and just uh, keep an eye on what's going on making sure that you know when the tree is going to start to move and if you hear any strange creaking which surprisingly you can hear the tree creaking over the chainsaw noise then if you hear anything strange it's, it's time to just assess again and, uh, and make sure that you are standing in a safe position. It's, uh, it's the left hand side that's moving. Yeah. Um, that's good. This one's not moving. No. I'll just go and make a little bit of a cut on the other side. Stay here, Craig. I think it's moving. Oh, it's going to go. If I just nick it, it'll go. Yeah, I think it's already still moving. Is this one in the textbook? It is, eh? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll need to reprint my one. It's just it's slowly. So great to have the machine on site, you can do so much more with the machine and uh, it minimises the clean up. Now this is to the other side of the tree, the intention here was to pretty much do a traditional bore and release cut, so the scarf's already in, Craig's doing a bore cut from one side, 
John is going to bore cut from this side. That way neither operator needs to go underneath the scarf once it's, uh, once it's been partially cut. Now the digger operator kind of came in and, um, and just pushed this. Uh, wasn't, wasn't necessary. So we, well you'll see what happens, but uh, half the bore cut's been done from the other side. Bore cut from this side, John's uh, doing a good job of that. Trying to get as much cut as he can and then the plan is to release it from cutting on the back side there. Here he goes. It starts to crack, but he probably should have kept cutting, but the digger was there so the digger could just push. But So John, why did you back cut it? Huh? Why did you back cut it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, because it'll be easy to break off the stuff. It's all the way down. It was so rotten. Main thing was everyone was clear, everyone was safe, and the tree was down without causing any damage. So, or actually a little bit of damage to a couple of orchard trees, but that was uh, that was planned. Well, we knew it was going to happen. No way to avoid it. Uh, I've deliberately left this bit in. It's not as exciting as watching trees being felled, but uh, it's a critical part of the operation that there's someone on the ground that can do good precise cross cutting of the logs to make it easier for the machine to move things around. It's uh, you know it's not as easy to cut logs on the ground as one might imagine. Just the tension and compression in these logs is uh, pretty incredible. Well, this is why we did all that effort, that precise cutting. Yeah, that was really important. Loosen the roots a little bit. Smoke today, yeah. I mean, with a back cut, it's made well out. When we did leave, oh, I think it's pretty yeah. We've been chipping this shit, you need. The chipper we use, an 18 inch, I reckon, would struggle with this shit. Like, you'd need like a 20, 22 or something. Just with all the, with all the multi branches on it. Yeah. Sure. The 18 inch, like, smashes big, nice poles. Um, <laughs> well, don't break. Now this tree here might actually be the biggest one that we did on this site. However, it, just because it's the biggest, it isn't necessarily the most complex. It had uh, a bit of a side lean and it took a lot of cutting to get the cuts right and all the cuts level and lined up. But because it was relatively intact, less decay in it and just a single stem, it, uh, it took a bit of perseverance. But uh, with, with guidance, we, we got good cuts in it, and uh, as you can see when it comes over, uh, it comes over pretty well. We've left quite a lot of hinge wood on this near side, which is the, the tension side. That's to not to help steer the tree, but just to have extra hold on this side. So we've set that up and then John gives the signal and there she goes. Well, turned out quite level. Music. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's not bad. Good hinge wood on this side. Good, Nathan. Nice level back cut. It started to dive. Yeah. So I made it straight up. 
bit of hinge wood on this side. So hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please uh, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It does help out the channel. These logs were uh, going to export, so you know it's a productive process, not just uh, not just an exercise in tree felling. So stay safe out there, and thanks for watching. Cheers.